Hello and welcome to yet another YouTube video here on this channel. In today's video we are diving into AnyType. And AnyType is one of these three object-based note-taking apps. And this won't be uh, an AnyType tutorial, but more of a review style video. I actually have a lot of AnyType tutorials, uh, but none of them are useful anymore because uh, AnyType has changed. Uh, but I actually built this channel uh, on any type of videos when I first started out uh, and that was back when it did not have a pricing plan which it does uh, now. I'm currently on the starter plan um, which gives me 100 megabytes of network storage, unlimited local storage, P2P sync, uh, three shared spaces, three editors per space, unlimited viewers per shared space and up to 10 megabytes for web publishing. Then we have uh, the builder plan, which is $10 each month, which is how much these pro plans cost. Uh, and with that, you get a global unique name, 128 gigs of network storage. You get unlimited local storage, P2P sync, three shared spaces, 10 editors per shared space, unlimited viewers up to 100 megabytes of web publishing, personalized domain for publishing and priority support. Uh, and um, then we have the co-creator plan, uh, which is $2.99 per three years. Uh, with that, you also get a global unique name from five plus characters, 256 gigs of network storage. That is the main difference here. Apart from that, like everything else is the same as the builder plan and uh, you also have a business plan which you can get upon a request they also allow you to donate uh, but we have already gone over one of the major benefits of something like any type and that is the local first idea here and also the p2p sync uh, let's actually uh, jump into the application right here um so i have a couple of spaces this is my youtube test space i also have uh, one shared space i played around with and i also have my own uh, space right here uh, that you can see and um i have mainly been using uh, this space when i've used any type and i've like showed off uh, and like used it for my own personal use case you can see that there is a bunch of stuff in here so i am quite familiar with the application but it has been a while since i actually used uh, any type and in here we can see uh, how this application works so it is similar to uh, something like uh, Notion where you have databases but in these object-based note-taking apps and that is what I really like about them you can have uh, what is called uh, queries uh, they used to be called sets so I'm always searching for sets but they are basically queries let's do just a usual one uh, where I can test this out so everything is an object uh, and I can choose a specific object type so let's say I wanted to find uh, the, the notes let's do the notes here uh, I don't think I actually have a note but I will explain how this works later this is now a database if I now go in somewhere else and I like start typing and I do backslash um, note and i go ahead and i create a test note uh, and we go back into this you can see that it appears right here and i can add different properties here and there are a bunch to choose from some of them are customs ones that i've made uh, for uh, myself some of them come with the application uh, so i can have like a select property or a multi-select property and there are a bunch of like properties i can add but what makes this uh way of doing it really uh good is that i can easily create a new project and it can live uh in multiple different places so let's say i had a new page uh just call this social media and i had a project within my social medias i could do project and uh then i could do like test project for social media that's what i will call it test project social uh, media and um if i now go back into my home page i have a 
project query right here. And you can see this is a project query. Um, but um, this application actually has uh, two types of databases. You can see what it has in here, like different embeds. Uh, there are a bunch of embeds, actually. You can see dots, dividers, you can add uh, tables. You can also add something called collections, which are databases, which I will come back to uh, now. Uh, and if I just do like backslash and I do collection, I can create an inline uh, collection. Uh, and I can also do it, uh, let's say, inside of my uh, projects. And if I go into, or actually, inside of my social, and then you have the, this test social media project. But let's say I had like my social media ideas here as well. Uh, I wanted an inline collection and I can create a new one and this will be social media ideas. And I could then add like different object types in here. It didn't necessarily have to be uh, pages. I could actually go ahead and I could change the object type. Uh, so books, for example, or in my case, it would be YouTube video or uh, Instagram post or a YouTube shorts video, because uh, the way these objects work uh, is that each object, uh, each object type has its own template. So a YouTube video has a different template than a podcast episode. So I would have uh, different object types for all of them. Um, if none of this makes sense and uh, you want me to go ahead and make a video and explain everything, I can do that. Just comment down below and I will try to get to that as soon as I can. But basically the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, a thing can be created in my uh, social media right here uh, in this page or it is actually a page uh, in this page. Uh, and when it is created here, I can then easily find it later using these sets and also, uh, sorry, using the queries. I still call them sets, but using the queries right here uh, and combined with like uh, different properties and filtering options because you have that as well. Uh, and there are also multiple ways of viewing uh, this. Those things uh, combined uh, actually allow me to uh, find exactly the thing I am looking for. Um, and that is probably one of the selling points of these object-based note-taking apps, capacities, Taldan, Anytype, all of them use queries in different ways. Uh, Anytype called them sets, but they changed the name to queries. And I think they've done a, a good job with like uh, making the terminology a little bit easier. They also probably have the most beautiful graph view I've seen. Uh, and I think the application generally has gotten a lot easier to understand uh, the last year. I still think it is really difficult to understand object-based note-taking app, but uh, Anytype has at least made it a little uh, easier. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you before I end off this uh, video right here is that um, I have... Uh, this is my resources page. So here I have a bunch of different resources. Here you can see that how a collection works where I have like different object types living in the same collection. Uh, that is what I use this for. But let's say I wanted to find all of my tweets. I could easily just create something to find all of my uh, tweets. But I also have this graph view here, and that is what I really like. So in a lot of applications, in a lot of these all-in-one applications, uh, like any type, the graph view often has a lot of different things that I don't necessarily want or care about. Like, I don't want to see my tasks in a graph view, for example. That is what Anytype solves with this because I can create a graph view just for my resources where I want to connect things together or create a Zettel custom system just for my notes, but avoid things like my tasks or my projects. And that is something uh, I think Anytype does well with allowing you to see your databases uh, as, um, 
as uh, like this graph view, you can also get Kanban, uh, calendar, gallery, and list. But I think that like shows off the main uh, stuff of any type. Of course, there is a lot more because this application is super versatile and there are so many things you can do with it. If you want a more in-depth um, video on this new AnyType experience, please do comment it down below. I also have a few uh, AnyType videos out already. Some of them might be a little useful. I don't think they're that useful any longer. Uh, but I think that covers it for today's video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will try to get to them as soon as I can. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video.